And how are you tonight? Really? Good evening, good morning. I'm Bill Pierce, and I have with me a radio program, and it's called Night Sounds. Through the ether waves we come by means of radio and touch people where they are. The night people are very special. Those who must be awake and active form one category. Then there are those who are troubled, insomniacs, those who worry, those who for one reason or another just can't seem to fall asleep. Many people who are under various forms of stress turn to the radio. We have a lot of dial spinners, those who are tuning us in by chance, not by choice. So I welcome you, whomever you might be, wherever. Tonight's sounds, it's verbal content and it's music. Our first song tonight features four or five guitars with a song of touching. Every one of us is born with what they call skin hunger. An infant needs to be touched and handled and loved. Not merely have a bottle stuck in his mouth and propped in the corner. But the touching means so much, and it's the difference between flourishing and perishing. Looking back into the biblical days, when Jesus was on earth, he touched people. He laid his hands on them. He lifted them. He encouraged them. He restored. This touch is available to you and me right now tonight by his Spirit. So... Let's be open and receptive to the touch of God, to the touch of hope, of comfort, of tranquility, and of power. out and touch. A moment ago I mentioned insomniacs. Public opinion polls claim that we, Americans, are the champion insomniacs of the world. An Oriental is reputed to have said to a distraught American, thou hast acquired the Western habit of running the universe. And the European contends that we Americans invented the rocking chair so we could keep moving while we sit still. 
Some statistician, perhaps with a headache himself, estimated there are seven and a half billion headaches per year in this country. I'm speaking of the United States. And attendant to that, 15 tons of aspirin are consumed each day. We've conquered many things in our modern world, but certainly anxiety is not one of them. Edward Markham, the famous American poet, died some years ago at the age of 88. And he was a friend of Dr. John Homer Miller and often visited in his home. Markham had unusual working habits. He'd often write throughout the night and retire just before dawn and sleep till noon. On one of his visits, a group of workmen began repairing the streets just outside Mr. Markham's bedroom window about eight o'clock. This was in the morning. And the noise from the machinery was terrific, and yet Mr. Markham slept until called at noon. When his host asked him how in the world he did it, he replied, When I go to bed at night, I turn the world in which I have been living during the day over to God. I have enough confidence in Him to know that He'll be able to take care of it without me for at least eight or ten hours. And as for the machinery outside, that's nothing to me but a fly speck on the hinges of eternity. Because through these long years of experience, I've learned to live one day at a time. to take what is, to trust what may be, and to meet tomorrow when it comes. Someone said living is an attitude toward life. Most of us haven't learned that lesson, yet we know how foolish worry is. We agree with the person who said to worry about what you can't help is useless. To worry about what you can help is stupid, yet we go right on worrying. Some years ago, the Public Health Service said this about the high rate of nervous frustration and related illnesses in the United States. Quote, So far as is known, no bird ever tried to build more nest than its neighbor. No fox ever fretted because he had only one hole in which to hide. No squirrel ever died of anxiety lest he should not lay by enough for two winters instead of one. And no dog ever lost any sleep over the fact that he didn't have enough bones laid aside for his declining years. I've read that most of our worries are imaginary. They're due to the human tendency to cross bridges before we get to them. And the Lord knew this weakness in human nature. This very first statement of the Lord is enough for some. Luke 12, 22, take no thought for your life. The answer to this for many is impractical, ridiculous. Well, that kind of reasoning would breed indolence and irresponsibility. But the Lord is not saying, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, neither what you shall put on. He doesn't mean we are not to work, to plan, or save. This is not an invitation to sleep or beg or excuse oneself from the obligations and necessities and responsibilities. What Jesus is saying is, do not be overly anxious about earthly necessities. And he re-emphasizes the truth, first pointing out that it's ridiculous for God's child to be overly anxious about earthly necessities. 
if God gives lives to be fed and bodies to be clothed, he'll see that we don't go hungry or cold if we exercise reasonable care to use and develop the resources he's given us. I think we need to remember tonight that life itself is a gift from God's hand. We can neither extend it nor change it. We can enjoy and utilize it, though. Or we can neglect and abuse it. Anxiety makes life neither delightful nor useful. The other day, I happened to be driving by a large auto dealership in Wheaton. And I saw this beautiful late model sports car out in the used car lot and usually they'll put one real neat deal up in front that's the buy of the day well here was this nice looking sports car out there with a big sign on it that said used but abused well who in the world could tell from looking it looked great but evidently there was a problem inside, under the hood. And so many of us put on a very neat front, all shiny and bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. We have the right words and we put on the right demeanor, the right clothes, and so on. But underneath, we're dying. We're abused. We're scared. And tonight I don't want to be unrealistic. Yet I can say of assurance that God who made us knows what makes us tick. I've often said to the Lord in prayer, Father, you know what will make me the best and you know also what will destroy me. So I pray for some sort of balance. Pray that you'll help me where I can't help myself. That you'll help me to be the right person today. In fact, these past six months, I haven't any idea how or why God used me in any way. Yeah, evidently, we've got to go on. We keep working and we keep moving, yet he gives the increase. Sort of like a house plant. We put it in potted soil. We give it enough sunshine and water and nourishment in the soil. We don't need to keep digging that plant up to see how the roots are doing. Let's let it alone. Let's give it what it needs and God will take care of the necessities of life. I'd like to play on the trombone now with the help of Bonnie Herman and the Singers Unlimited. A beautiful old hymn with a title there is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God.
is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God. Just in case you've joined us in the past few moments, this is Night Sounds, and I'm Bill Pierce with you. We'll get back to the program Night Sounds in just a moment. This is Libby, the lady announcer you occasionally hear on Night Sounds. In these incredibly difficult days, everyone is seeking answers more than ever, but we feel we have little or no control of the challenges we face. Turmoil all around the world, the heartbreaking pictures from the horrific war in Ukraine has shaken our senses. COVID-19 brought on depression, loneliness, and has divided the nation like never before. Real answers are available from above as the world's solutions fail. The unique ministry of Bill Pierce and the program Night Sounds reminds us that God is closer than a brother, and His power is bigger than all of our troubles, challenges, and an unglued world. For many decades, Night Sounds has been a solace, bringing spiritual hope and meaning for troubled times. Would you prayerfully consider supporting the ministry of Night Sounds with a generous contribution? Your gift will help keep Night Sounds coming your way on this radio station and other digital platforms for years to come. Supporting Night Sounds is simple. Go to our website, nightsoundsradio.org, and click the Donate tab. Or on your smartphone or tablet, go to the Night Sounds app and click the Donate tab. Or if you prefer to give by mail, our address is Night Sounds, Box 29, Wheaton, Illinois, 60189. Thanks for listening to Night Sounds with Bill Pierce. We're speaking tonight to the problem of anxiety. Very simple focus right now from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 12, verse 24, where Jesus suggested that we consider parts of his creation, namely the birds. They are provided for. God feeds them. They don't fret or worry, but they do work. Few men work as hard as the sparrows for a living. And in this passage earlier, the Lord spoke of God's concern for the cheapest article sold for food on their market to drive home the infinite worth of the individual in God's sight. He asked, Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings and Not one of them is forgotten before God. But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore. You are of more value than many sparrows. Luke chapter 12, verses 6 and 7. And if God cares for the sparrow that has no soul, that can't save father, that cannot trust, that is not immortal, Isn't it foolish to doubt his care for you and me? And in Luke chapter 12, Jesus asks, What good do you think your worry will do anyway? Worry has no useful purpose. It can't add to your height. can't add to your life. Another part of his creation he suggests we focus on is the lilies. Chapter 12, verses 27 to 29 in Luke. The lilies were the scarlet anemones which grew on the hills of Palestine. After one of the infrequent summer showers, the mountainside would turn scarlet with them, and they bloomed only for a day. And they were a story of God's bountiful love and care. And Jesus is saying, why don't you look at the wildflowers? They don't work, they don't spin, yet their lovely colors are more beautiful than any dyer's vat can produce or any weaver's loom can provide. They do neither man nor woman's work, and yet the splendor of Solomon does not compare with their beauty. God has not forgotten you and me. Sometimes I feel that he has, yet he hasn't, and he won't. But have we forgotten him? This is a very important question that we consider right now in music. As the International Chorus sings about my first love. Let's internalize this as we hear Thank you. 
My First Love. The International Chorus, directed by Paul Johnson. We're citing the Gospel according to St. Luke, and the Lord emphasized here for our comfort with these words, You are my children. Don't act like the pagan. Worry about material things describes the pagan who has an entirely different standard of values. He admires his material mindedness, and he admits it. The Lord goes on to say, Rather seek you the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell that ye have, and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approaches, neither moth corrupts. But where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. This is the very heart of the matter. Often there's been one verse through the years that I have claimed before God. In moments of anxiety, even as a teenager, I remember suicidal thoughts and great, deep, lingering fears in the middle of the night. This word from Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3, still works. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. These words from the King James translation still hold true tonight to you and me. I trust that as we go our way tonight that we'll put our full weight on the credibility of God. This is much easier said than done, I know. Yet it is a very simple procedure. When Paul the Apostle speaks about a transfer, putting our weight on the promises of God, he's talking about something that is very important. Reminding ourselves of the words again, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, Let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep or garrison your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Boy, I tell you, I've dissected that verse many times, taken it apart and presented it to God, and in essence saying, Lord, this is your word, this is your promise, and it's now your responsibility to back it up to put teeth in it, to make it real. Well, that's true, but we can't dictate to him the terms of how he's going to carry that out. The timing is his, the details, the carrying it out in our lives. At the same time, he may be teaching us patience, which is the hardest lesson to learn. You know that one. Well, thank you for sharing with me tonight on Night Sounds. I've not said anything that probably hasn't been said before. Now and then people will ask me what the secret to this program is, and I don't know what to say, other than God has promised to work and make his strength perfect in weakness. And I've prayed that the dynamic of God will meet with both of us tonight. Our mailing address, in case you'd like to get a hold of us, is Night Sounds, Wheaton, Illinois, 60187. Thanks again for being there. I hope you have a worry-free day tomorrow. And until we meet again, a very effective and pleasant good night. Good night.